Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. learners i am dr supriya jain working as an assistant professor in the institute of business management at gla university mathura so let's start with our today's session and before we move for our today's session let us look at the topic we have covered in our previous session in our previous session we have studied about the cost as we all know cost is a sacrifice for whatever the production we are making and in today's time it is very important for all of us to analyze the cost because cost is the only component which is available to the firm where they could have a scope of increasing their profit margin because of this uh, cutthroat competition in the market right it is very difficult for the producer to increase the prices of the commodity to increase the revenue right so they need to understand the areas where they can focus on reducing their cost so for that reason we have talked about cost analysis and there also we have discussed about different types of cost like we have talked about explicit and implicit cost we have discussed about controllable and non controllable cost we have talked about direct and indirect cost we have talked about incremental and sunk cost so there are different type of cost which are involved in the business and there are few costs which need to taken into account what impact are they going to create like one of the important costs we have talked about opportunity cost which is also called as imputed cost and this is again uh the another name can be implicit cost right now this is the cost which we are not paying to anybody and nor we are mentioning it into the books of account so sometime we don't take it into consideration but it is again very important because in economics we are not only concerned with the accounting profit we need to understand uh, whether we are in economic gain or economic loss thereafter we have discussed about uh, this total cost total variable cost and total fixed cost and for the understanding of short run and long run cost and output relationship these cost were different uh, these these cost are very important to know right like total cost is basically the summation of total variable cost plus total fixed cost and total fixed cost is the cost which remain fixed which does not changes with the change in the output right whereas variable cost are those cost which varies with the variation in the output and that is why we call them as in variable cost but if you look at the nature of this uh, fixed cost this remain fixed whereas variable cost is varying but the rate of variation is different with the output right initially the variable cost increases with the higher margin and uh, you know with with the slower rate whereas at later it increases with the higher rate right thereafter we have talked about the average concept of these cost like what will be the cost per unit if we are calculating the average fixed cost average variable cost and again average cost and for the study of uh, you know the cost we need to find out where our cost of production is minimum we always take into account average cost this is the cost of production per unit okay then we have talked about this marginal cost marginal cost is the cost of producing one additional unit right if we are adding an additional unit of commodity so what extra cost are we going to incur on the same that we uh, study under this marginal cost and thereafter we have talked about cost and output relationship in short run as well as in long run right so let us look at the learning objective of today's session what all you will be able to understand by our today's discussion here in this session i am going to introduce you with the concept of economies and this economies of scale now this is the term which you must have heard various time we have come across this economies and this economies of scale and because of that uh, you know there are different type of cost which involves in our business and how we will be able to get the advantages okay if you are working on the large scale or if you are working on the small scale so that is what we are going to cover here is what is meant by economies and this economies of scale thereafter this uh, session will help you to develop an understanding of economies of scope as well right how we are differentiating between economies of scale and what is meant by economies of scope and lastly you'll be able to analyze the cost and learning curve so these will be the learning session for you uh, for our today's class 
And now before we move ahead and I will explain you about economies and diseconomies of scale, I here want you to recall back what we have discussed in our previous lecture so as you will be able to understand what we are talking here about economies and diseconomies of scale. So, students uh, you must be able to understand this relationship very carefully where we have understood the relationship between the marginal cost and average cost. So, this is how I have drawn the marginal cost curve, this is your x axis and this is our y axis and as we all know here on the x axis we represent the quantity uh, and the output you can say and on the y axis we always represent the cost. So, the average cost curve looks like this, this is how we basically draw this average cost curve and this relationship also we have discussed in our previous class where we have seen how average fixed cost and average variable cost affects the average cost curve and why this uh, curve is of U shape. So, we have seen that initially when we increase the output uh, our cost reduces and then thereafter it started increases after a point of time and this is how our marginal cost curve cuts our average curve from below right and here we have seen the point when marginal cost curve is lesser than the average cost curve our average cost will decline there will be a reduction in the average cost and when marginal cost is greater than the average cost in that case average cost will increase whereas the point where marginal cost is equal to the average cost this point is called as optimum point like up to this point if you are making a production then a cost of production will be minimum right. So, for you it is important to understand that the average cost curve as because we are talking about the short run. So, we denote the short run average cost curve with SAC and when we talk about long run average cost curve and since long run average cost curve comprises of various short run average cost curve like uh, see this is SAC 1 and this is SAC 2 and maybe this is SAC, uh, SAC 3 right. So, by combining all these three cost curve we get the long run average cost curve LAC and this is why we call it as a envelope curve because long run is a planning horizon and we can change our fixed factor like these are the uh, you know size plant size which we can increase in the long run. So, long run comprises of various short run average cost curve. Now, for your understanding what we are going to cover here is why this LAC curve is of U shape, why this is of U shape uh, that is uh, the answer which we are going to understand in this lecture where we are going to discuss the economies and diseconomies of scale and this U curve represent that when initially you increase the size of your output ok output when you increase then the cost will decrease initially but up to a point it will reduce and further if you will increase the size of your production these cost will increase. So, let us start with our discussion we are, we are going to talk about economies and diseconomies of scale. So, economies of scale basically means lowering of cost of production by producing in the bulk right economies of scale means the advantages you can call economies as an advantages and scale here means the uh, you know scale on which we are working right uh, the size of operations we are into right. So, we are talking here about the long run scale if you are working in, a, in a, at the larger scale right when we are producing in the bulk and by producing in bulk or how we are able to reduce our cost that means the economies of scale right by producing in a larger quantity if you are able to reduce the cost of our production and that reduce, uh, reduction is caused is basically considered to be as an economies of scale. So, economies of scales refers to the efficiencies ok associated with the large scale production. So, whenever we are producing uh, at the larger scale. Uh, the efficiencies which we are getting which helps in the reduction of our cost would be considered as an economies of scale. Further we are saying that it is a situation with in which long run average cost curve the LAC curve which we have talked just now right of producing a good as well as services decreases with the increase in the level of output. I just now I have shown this to you that whenever we will increase the output this LAC curve will decrease and when further we will increase the output this will convert it into diseconomies of scale. So, right now we are talking up to this part when with the increase in the output the cost which in decreases the LSE curve which reduces where, where we are getting the advantage of reducing the cost of our production would be considered as an economies of scale and this part when further we are increasing the output that we will cover under the diseconomies of scale how we will be getting those disadvantages right. 
So, let us talk about the economies of scale where we have classified it into two categories. We call it as an internal economies and external economies, right. So, here we are going to understand how we are going to get the advantages by working at the large scale. So, here the first is internal economies. Now, these are the economies which a firm is going to get uh, because of their size on which they are working. So, this explain as a cost per unit depends, okay. The reduction in the cost per unit depends upon the size of the firm. If the firm size is large or they are working on the large scale, then what advantages they will be getting because of which their cost is reducing, those would be considered to be as an internal economies of scale. Whereas, external economies are because of the size of industry, not the size of the firm, right. If the size of industry and industry is basically the group of firms dealing in a same product line, right. Like we call it as in banking industry. So, banking industry comprises of all the banking institutions, right. And we call it as an educational industry. So, all the educational institutions comprise this educational industry. So, industry is basically the combination of firms dealing into the same product line. Internal economies we are saying uh, are the advantages which a firm is getting because of their own size of operation. Whereas, external economies are the benefits where they are able to reduce their cost because of the size of the industry, not the firm, right. So, this is something you need to remember. And one most important thing is all inputs are variable in the long run that we have already understood that there is no concept of fixed cost. Fixed cost is only applicable in the short run because these are the costs which we cannot change within a period of time. But after that period, we will be able to change them. So, they becomes variable. So, only economies of scale can influence the shape of long run average cost curve, right. As because we have a uh, variable cost in the long run only, there is no fixed cost in the uh, long run. Therefore, this long run average variable cost curve will get affected by the economies of scale. So, let us start with the internal economies first how a firm is going to get the economies internally because of their size of operation. So, here further we have categorized it into uh, six different heading and here we will be going to talk about labor economies, technical economies, marketing economies, managerial economies, transportation and storage economies as well as financial economies. Now, let us talk about the very first one where we are going to understand how large scale firm is going to get an advantage in the form of labor. So, one thing here you need to understand the firms who are working at the large scale are having an advantage because they are having more people who are working in their organization and one thing which they can go with is called as division of labor and division of work, right. So, division of labor is basically uh, the, the uh, aspect which has been propounded by Adam Smith who is also known as the father of economists. He is the one who says that it is easier for the larger scale companies to divide their work and according to the division of work they can make the division of labor. Now, with this division what uh, advantages firms are going to get that is the advantage of specialization. If you are assigning a person a repetitive nature of job right that person will get specialized in doing that work and once they are becoming specialized into their area the time which they are going to take and the efficiency which they are going to uh, produce with that work will be higher right and this efficiency will reduce the cost and reduce the time of doing that work. So, in large scale plants worker can be assigned repetitive nature of jobs and an entire job can be broke down into the process rather than giving different kind of jobs to different people. It is better to divide your work initially and based on the division the processes which you have convert, divided, uh, uh, divided and those division of work you have assigned to the specific people. So, such process can be assigned to the worker or the group of workers and by doing that repetitive nature of job they become specialized into their area. So, specialization we uh, would need lesser training, right. People will become specialized, though they will uh, be trained enough to do that work, lesser time would be needed and actually lesser supervision is also required. Otherwise, what will happen if you are giving 
uh, you know a new task to a new person then you need to supervise that person you need to tell that person how it has to be done so unnecessarily we are also involving one person into that particular task right but by division of work you have assigned that repetitive nature of work to that person and this person is doing it uh, on a regular basis so he is himself becomes specialized into it he does not need any kind of a supervision he will do his work uh, you know within the time or maybe faster than that and there would be lesser training required for him to do that task so all these things right uh, with the reduction in time and the reduction in supervision as well as reduction in training will help the organization to in, uh, to reduce their cost and to get better uh, you know uh, operations or be better results you can say right so this is how labor economies we can get by working at the large scale the next we have technical economies how companies are getting the advantages in terms of techniques right when they are working at the larger scale of organization so here again we have two things the first one is a specialized equipment it is easier for the larger organization to have uh, you know uh, capital intensive techniques and where we have more specialized equipment and as we all know better the state of technology better will be the uh, you know size of output and if you are producing in bulk definitely the cost of reduction will be lesser so this specialized equipment uh, can be used in the larger organization because they have uh, better capacity to install uh, smart technologies in their organization and this integration and automation of the process will also help in the cost of production if if you are doing that work uh, with a labor intensive uh, you know unit then you need more people to do that task and that kind of uh, quality will also not be maintained but yes in case of that if you are installing some machine which uh, which do that work in an integrated and automatic type of way where you will be able to get better result so in large scale production large machine would be needed because the production has to be done at the larger scale so for a given amount of input these machines may render output in the larger quantity okay so lesser input is being needed and more output you can generate with these uh, technique okay so beside this you can also ensure that more efficient use of available raw material can be done right because there will be lesser wastages tasks are being taken up by the machine and those things can be done in a most efficient manner right so this is how we can get these technical economies by working on the large scale better specialized equipment can be used uh, we can always overcome our labor intensive units with the capital intensive units where lesser input would be required to generate the uh, higher output okay then next we have marketing economies in the form of marketing economies how we are getting the advantage so the first point says firms producing at the large scale are uh, you know requiring the material also in bulk right so large scale firms usually purchase their requirement the raw material which they require for the production because their production size is higher so definitely the purchase of raw material will be in bulk and because of purchasing things into bulk they are getting better discounts and these discounts will help them to minimize their cost so this is something which we also observe if you are buying something in a smaller quantity then we need to pay more for that but for the same thing if you are buying the larger quantity of these things then definitely we will be getting good dis uh, discounts and that is the difference between the retailer as well as the wholesaler because wholesaler are the people who who uh, purchases uh, in a bulk right and because of that uh, whatever the purchase they are making they are getting it at a lesser price whereas the retailers are the people who are buying in a smaller quantities and for that reason they need to pay more for it so this is one advantage which a larger scale organization firms will get because they are producing in the larger quantity large scale firms can also minimize their expenditure on advertisement right this is again a very good uh, aspect which they are going to get firms who are working at the large scale and as we all know advertisement is important for for generating the sale of your product in the market to make them aware of your product it is very important to advertise so advertisement cost per unit will get reduced if you are working at the large scale because advertisement cost will remain same but when you work at a larger scale your per unit cost will be lesser okay suppose you can say that for producing 1 lakh units and uh, for producing 5 lakh units whatever the 
size of production you are making if you are spending the same amount on the advertisement the the media which you are using for your advertisement or the sources which you are using for your advertisement the amount which you are paying to them would be same because it hardly matters to those sources whether you are producing in a smaller scale or you are producing in a larger scale ultimately you have to pay them the same amount so here your cost of production will be uh, cost per unit of advertisement will be uh, mean, uh, will be lesser right if you are producing in a larger quantity okay another advantage which you are going to get in marketing economies larger firms can have their exclusive wholesale dealers because the people who are uh, you know producing in the larger quantities they they need to keep their product in the uh, you know warehouses or the storage areas are been required so they have their exclusive whole dealers who are purchasing directly from them because they are producing in the larger quantity they need not have to find out their own dealers wholesalers are directly approaching them for the larger quantities which need to be sold in the market so again the, the these firms who are working on the large scale are supposed to uh, spend less on the distribution network also because directly people are coming uh, to them for their you know uh, for for taking up their output or for taking up the products for them and to distribute it into the market right so the better utilization of sales staff can be done in a larger scale organization so again this marketing economies also help us in the cost reduction then moving ahead we also get managerial economies as we all know manager is a very important person and plays a very important role in the organization so how managerial economies are been taken up in the large scale organization because in the large scale organization we have different units we have different departments dealing into different areas right for the small firm it is very difficult for them to appoint different managers but for the large scale we have hr managers we have finance managers we have marketing managers and these people have the specialized knowledge of their area where they would be able to take up the task in a better manner so large uh, you know production can ensure better managerial functions by way of better supervision as well as administration okay because these are the people who are able to uh, you know uh, take up the things in a better manner because of having those managerial skills and administrative skills in them so here they will be uh, here the company will be able to get advantage because of their skills departmentalization becomes possible because of the larger organization like i said because the organization is working on a large scale so you can uh, you know uh, have a department in your organization uh, planning and organization becomes worthwhile right otherwise for the small scale one person who is the owner of the company he is playing each and every role right he is also recruiting for the company he is the person who is planning for the training of the employees he is uh, uh, working for the marketing strategies he is also arranging the finance of for the company so here one person is playing the multiple roles and might be possible he uh, or she is not capable of managing all the roles well together right in place of that single person if a person from the uh, area who has the specialized knowledge of that area would be able to perform better and would be able to generate better results right so large scale firms also have an advantage of advanced techniques right for the faster communication in the organization they can use better communication techniques they can have uh, better facilities of telephones faxes computers right and their own means of transportation which makes their work faster and easier so all these quick help decision making and saving valuable time of the management helps in the cost reduction so basically what we are talking right now is the advantages the economies which a firm is getting while working on the large scale moving ahead let us look at the transportation and storage economies how firms are going to get transportation and storage economies working on the large scale and we can say that the large firms can utilize their transport facilities because of their production and sale in the larger quantity so here we have one example to make it more clear how large firms are getting the advantages in terms of transportation suppose there is a firm uh, there is a truck right and truck is having a carrying capacity of 50 drums okay a uh, uh, truck company is sending their products to their customer and we are sending it via truck okay and the uh, truck has a capacity of carrying 50 drums at a same time paint charges freight 5000 suppose we are sending this truck from delhi to agra 
and the freight charges which we need to pay is 5000 and the carrying capacity of the drum is 50 drum uh, of, of the truck is the 50 drums. So, if a small company whose requirement for a full year is just 20 drums, okay, a smaller company because their requirement will be smaller because they are purchasing it, uh, you know, or they are uh, working at a small scale. So, their output they are generating in a smaller size. So, therefore, the material which they are requiring would also be lesser. So, they just require 20 drums. Again, they will have to bear this transportation cost. So, what will be the transportation cost? 5000 divided. 20 right so this uh, this uh, goes to 250 per drums right 250 per drum will be the transportation cost for the smaller companies because they are requiring lesser uh, they have their lesser requirements and the carrying capacity of trunk is more but they will definitely order as per their requirements so for them the cost will be 250 per drum now if you see for a large firm having a consumption of 100 drums a year right a person who is working on the large scale definitely their consumption requirement will be more so they have the requirement of 100 drums per year so at a time they can easily order 50 drums right uh, they can uh, ask the uh, you know delivery of 50 drums at the same time because they have more requirements so here you can see the transportation cost will reduce because the freight will remain same if the distance is same the freight will remain same and the truck is already having the capacity of 50 drum so if you are asking them to send the material with their full capacity of 50 drums now your cost of production will be reduced sorry uh, cost of transportation will be reduced to 100 per drum right so for the small scale the transportation cost was 250 per drum and the same thing for the large company will be 100 per term that depends upon the size of their requirement. So, this advantage we have seen at the time of purchasing also whenever we are purchasing the raw material when we purchase in a bulk we get the better discounts. Same we are benefiting in the case of transportation cost our transportation cost per unit will reduce. We are also getting the same advantage in the terms of advertisement our advertisement cost per unit will also reduce when we produce at a larger scale. And lastly we can uh, have some example of the companies like Toyota of Japan usually what they do rather than having their own warehouses they ask their supplier to have the uh, warehouses nearby their factories because they are getting good uh, you know uh, you can say uh, good business from these companies because they are working on a very large scale. So, the material can be supplied at a last minute uh, on or you can say a little minute order where the company reduces their storage cost also right. So, company need not have to spend on the storage of these commodities they can ask directly their supplier to take the supplies uh, on a very little minute order where they are not spending their time and money for storage of those goods right. So, this is how the companies are getting the advantages when they are working on the large scale and last in this we have financial internal economies these are all internal economies which a firm is getting because of their scale of operation right. Large scale companies also get these financial arrangements very easily and they can have the larger volume of production right and for that reason they can easily raise capital from the market. So, large companies are in a better position to raise capital from the market as well as they are capable more of getting loans right because they have good name in the market and they, their size of business is good. So, people generally trust them and invest their money into their business where they are capable of generating more income from it right. So, financial economies are also one of the advantage which the firms are getting internally right. So, these are some of the areas which we have discussed where firms are getting economies of scale because of their large scale operation. Now, moving ahead we have external economies also right. Initially, we have talked about internal economies what internal benefits which we are getting working on the large scale then now we are going to talk about the external economies and like I said external economies are the benefits uh, which a firm is getting not because of their own size because of the size of the industry right. If I am operating within some industry and that indiv industry is individually growing not only my firm is getting good uh, you know profit in the market but altogether the demand for industry is good in the market. So, what are the advantages which I am also getting because of the uh, growing demand of that industry. So, as industry grows in size it would create various economies for the existing firms in the industries 
and here we have classified it into four categories where we have technological advancements, easier access to the cheaper raw material, financial institution in proximity as well as pool of skilled workers. Now let us look at them one by one what is meant by technological advancement. See when the industry grows, the industry spends more money on uh, you know investments and in research as well as development ok. So, growing industry will always encourage investments in the research and by research by, by doing such kind of research you will be able to develop better technology of production and with this develop better technology of production you will get further advantages ok which we have already seen the specialized equipment will help the firms to reduce their cost of production. And as the economy expands technological innovations will get definitely boost they will further increases as we are seeing it in the case of automobile industries we are getting uh, you know advanced car these days we have electric vehicle uh, you know also. So, all these are uh, possible because of the research and development taking place in the industries and why we are uh, why the industry is spending so much on these activities and why they are uh, coming up with the better technologies because of the demand right because of the growing uh, nature of these industries like IT industry is doing the same. So, these are the technological advan advancements which firms are also getting because of the growth of the industry. Second is availability of raw material definitely the raw material availability will be better because there are, will be higher demands in the market. So, supplier would have a larger market to cater and to therefore, the availability of raw material would be easier right. If you know that this certain industry is growing and the people who supply the raw material to those industries will also be ready to supply because they know they have good, uh, good uh, purchaser. So, they will be available they are, they are going to uh, get their materials available to their people right. So, expanded demand of raw material increases the supply also which encourages the supplier to increase the supply. Then there is a financial institution in proximity. What is this point refers to financial institution in proximity means when the industry is growing they are also having this advantage where they are going to get good finances ok. So, as we know the industry need finance to grow that is for sure and financial institutions look for avenue for investment. So, this is a kind of an interrelationship right firms need the investment investors financial institutions and financial institute uh, tutors or institution needs the industries where they can invest their money. Okay, so, whatever the money we are depositing in the financial institutions what are they going to do with that money definitely they are going to invest this into the industries which are growing industries so that they can also can get better return right. So, this mutuality of interest encourages their mutual growth as well as coexistence and we can easily see that the boom uh, take place in Indian financial sector after the globalization because globalization has given lot of opportunities for the industries uh, for their growth and their development and because of that we have seen that Indian financial sector has already taken a boom right. Then next we have pool of skilled workers this is also the benefit which an uh, you know firm is getting because of the growth of the industry as because large industries provides opportunities for employment definitely when there will be a growth of industry we would be needing more people and we would be able to have better employment opportunities for the people. So, hence just like technology is improving material and finance is also getting available this human resource too would acquire needed skills right. Uh, like we have demand of this IT softwares why because this IT industry is growing everybody would like to do uh, you know uh, would like to make their career in the IT industry because of the growth in the IT industry. So, if the industries are growing people will also try to have those skills and pool of people would like to get their education into that area right because of the management skills required in the organization people are opting for these management courses right. So, this is how the pool of skilled workers will be generated because of the growing demand of the industry you are also getting the better talent uh, of the people right. So, these are the economies which a firms can avail because of their size of operation where we have discussed them into two categories internal economies and external economies. Internal economy arises because of the operations or the size of a firm whereas, external economies arises because of the growing demand of the industry but not the firm right. 
So, I hope these economies are clear to every one of you. So, as we have discussed about the economies of scale, let us start with the diseconomies of scale. Now, diseconomies of scales refer to the disadvantages you can see and now here we are talking about the second part of our long run average cost curve which is of U shape which we have discussed where the cost has started increases with the increase in the size of output, right. So, how these this economies of scale takes place and why the cost increases with the increase in the output will be clear to you. So, if cost, some cost of the business rises with the increase in the size by the greater proportion, right? If you are increasing the size and you are able to increase the cost, the cost is increasing more than the output, then definitely you call it as an diseconomy of scale, right? So, this particular condition would be considered to be as an diseconomy of scale. So, it occurs on the right side of the long, uh, you know, long run average cost curve just like I have drawn the left side are, are the economies of scale and on the right side when these uh, cost has started increases, we call it as in this economy of scale. This will always be upward sloping implies that average cost is increasing, right. So, again we have classified this diseconomies of scale into two categories. We have internal diseconomies and external diseconomies and the uh, you know uh, uh, implications are same internal diseconomies are because of the operations of the firm because you are increasing the size of your firm uh, or you are working at the large scale operation because of that whatever the cost increase is called as internal uh, diseconomies whereas external diseconomies this is because of the uh, industry right because of the large size of the industry not because of the individual size of the firm. So, let us look at the very first part where we are going to discuss internal diseconomies. Now, internal diseconomies it emerges from the difficulties of managing a larger organization. Since we are talking about the economies and diseconomies of the larger organization and when initially we increase the size of our output right, there, there we get the certain advantages, there we get the certain economies, but definitely when the size increases more than required right. So, it becomes difficult for the organization to be managed and because of the larger size a bigger size of the company it becomes difficult for the management to manage. So, all these problems will arise. The very first problem says if the size of operation becomes unwildly right the size of operation unwildly you have increased the size of your operation which becomes very difficult for the uh, you know manager to manage it then these problems will takes place. There will be difficulty in the coordination right among the different work groups and units may become complex right. We have talked about managerial economies, we have talked about that in large scale organization departmentalization becomes possible where different managers can manage things in a better way. But what happens when the size increases unwildly then there will be a problem in the coordination and this problems will definitely increase the cost of the organization right. If the HR manager is not coordinating well with the finance manager or the finance manager is not coordinating well with the production manager then definitely who is going to suffer? The company's operations are going to suffer and it will increase the cost right. So, coordination among the different set of people, different groups of people will be a problem. Then too much specialization may lead to boredom and monotony among workers. If you remember we have talked about labor economies and there we have talked about division of work, division of labor where we have assigned the repetitive nature of work to the person so as we can get the advantage of specialization because the specializations require lesser time, lesser supervision, lesser control, right, lesser training has been required if a person is super is specialized into his or her area. But here you can see when too much specialization is being done that it leads to boredom, people feel bored, they, they feel monotony of the work and when monotony will be there definitely their enthusiasm or, or, or the motivation of doing that work will be reduced and their efficiency will go down. Then management may become less effective and thus directly imposes the cause. The managers which we were talking earlier were getting uh, giving the advantage to the companies now maybe because of the workload maybe because of the larger size of operation they becomes inefficient and when they are not working efficiently then definitely the cost of the organization will be increased 
right people working in the larger organization may also feel less committed because of the lesser communication between the people less coordination among the people right they do not able to develop the sense of intimacy with the organization where they are not uh, feeling that connect right and if you are not feeling that connect it will be difficult for you to work with that intention right it is very important for the organization to develop that connect with your people where they are doing your work with with the dedication with the motivation so that whatever the work they are going doing they would be able to produce better results right so internal diseconomies are basically seen as the uh, you know disadvantages which arises because of unevenly distribution of your uh, you know size of operations if they spread unwindly all the benefits which we have seen which we have talked in terms of technical in terms of uh, you know transportation and storage or maybe in terms of advertisement uh, we have talked about financial economies all these things are slowly and steadily converting into diseconomies and they are increasing the uh, you know cost of the organization and that is why a long run average cost curve slope will go upward right so it is not advisable for the organizations to cross that uh, you know limit where they are unnecessarily unwisely uh, spreading the size of their business which is ultimately not going to give them any benefit but also increasing their cost now let us look to the next part of it where we have external diseconomies now what is meant by external diseconomies like i said external diseconomies are the uh, you know economies which arises because of the size of the industry that is not individual to the firm so here what we are saying as a business becomes largely right when the demand of industry increases that means the demand for all the Uh, firms working in that industry will increase so if it, there will be a more uh, you know demand of the things then there will be a pressure on the supply of raw material because all the firms in that industry would be requiring raw material would be requiring labor thus raises their input price right if every firm is demanding the raw material from the supplier because of their demand in the market then definitely supplier will sell those inputs at the higher price and if the inputs are been produced uh, purchased at the higher price then definitely the cost of production will be higher like we have talked about the pool of skilled workers has been created because of the size of industry right now these skilled workers will charge higher prices to show their skills or to work with the organization because of their higher demand in the market so this is again a simple economics we can put here it is all uh, you know the game of demand and supply when there will be a more demand and the lesser supply will be there definitely the price of those things will go up so same thing happens in this external diseconomies when the size of organizations wide uh, spread unwidely in that case when the demand increases for the input for the raw material for the labor then their demand uh, increases uh, the increased demand will reduce the supply and the reduction in supply uh, charges uh, causes more price of these things right whatever the inputs you are going to get you will be getting it on the higher prices and that will uh, increase the cost of production so for example you can also see recent pressure uh, has put uh, the demand for cement steel and fuel prices to be raised in the industries because uh, these are the industries where the demand is growing and because of the growing demand of these products their prices increases and with the increase in the prices the cost of production has increased and with the cost of production and increase increases the prices further so the all things are interrelated and have a connected effect how the things are going to get affected right so uh, this is now we have seen why uh, this average cost curve the long run average cost curve is of u shape and how these economies and diseconomies arises why initially these uh, you know advantages these these economies helped us to redu uh, reduce the average cost long run average cost and further when we increase the size of operation where the input which we are putting are more than the output which we are getting right so that causes as an diseconomies of scale so if we summarize the overall topic of economies and diseconomies of scale we can say that here we have talked about economies into two parts internal economies and the external economies internal economies arises because of the uh, you know uh, size of the operation of the firm itself 
whereas external economies arises because of the size of industry not the firm because of the overall demand of the industries how the individual firms are also being benefited so those are being considered to be as an external economies whereas in this economies as these are the uh, you know this uh, economy arises when your cost increases with the increase in the output okay and the increase in the cost would be called as this economies of scale again we have internal this economies and external this economies internal this economies because of the internal mismanagement or the poor management of the company within the organization right whereas external this economies arises because of the growing demand of that industries right which increases the demand of the input which which put pressure on the increase in the demand of the inputs of the raw material of the labor right and because of which their prices increases and these increased prices will increase the cost of production right so this is about your economies of scale now let us look at the next heading where we have economies of scope now how we are going to differentiate this economies of scope with economies of scale economies of scales refers to the size of operation on which you are working right like we have talked about the economies of scale uh, of large scale right if a company is operating on a large scale how they are going to get benefit but here if we talk about economies of scale a uh, scope this basically arises with the lower average cost of manufacturing a product when a two complementary products are produced by a single firm when two products are being produced by a single firm using the same kind of input resources then the kind of advantage they are going to get the help which they are going to get in the reduction of their cost would be known as economies of scope so it is applicable basically to the firms which are producing more than the one product right this is this concept is not applicable for those who are producing only the single product but for the firm who are producing more than one product they can obtain uh, you know uh, they can obtain their production and the cost advantage which is uh, known as economies of scale, scope where they are producing two good products or more than two commodities may be of similar nature right uh, which have a joint demand which can be demanded jointly right so there the people are able to get economies of scope economies of scope how they are helping they are actually helping in the marketing strategies like product bundling right you are selling two products together right what 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 has been done if a company is producing like a toothpaste and a toothbrush because these are the things which are demanded jointly so they are producing them together and they are bundling them together and selling to the customer all togetherly and you are selling your two products at the same time right so this is a kind of a marketing which you can do very easily a company who is producing a shampoo and also producing a conditioner so they are bundling their product together and consumer is asking for the shampoo and you are able to sell your two commodities at the same time this is also helping in family branding or umbrella branding right within a name of one company you are able to brand out your all products togetherly because you are producing more than one product and you need not have to advertise them separately like hindustan uh, unilever limited or any conglomerate company like tatas like reliance so all these people are getting the advantage of economies of scale because they have uh, you you know use their business into different operations where they are using different uh, you know commodities where they are operating with the different products and they are taking the advantage of family branding and umbrella branding to brand their products in the market right there are two kind of diversification which a company can do one is concentric and the other one is conglomerate concentric diversification is a diversification which you are making into a same uh, or related product line right amul is an example of concentric diversification the products which they are providing are of uh, dairy products right all their products are of uh, are related to the dairy right whereas reliance and tatas are the example of conglomerate where they have diversified their business into different areas they are working into different product lines so that has been referred to as conglomerate diversification so i hope economies of scope is clear to everyone where we are saying that economies of scope arises where you are producing more than one commodity and you try to produce uh, the usually the complementary goods which are jointly demanded so that you can use the same kind of input resources and the material to produce the similar kind of a commodity which you can also sell together so here if we can see how we are differentiating between economies of scale and economy of scope 
you can say that economies of scale refers to the change in output of a single product type right when you increase the output of a single product so what impact it is going to create on your average cost that is called as economies of scale if the cost is reducing then we are getting economies if the average cost is increasing then we call it as indice economies whereas economies of scale uh, economies of scope refers to the change in the number of product of different type right different products you are producing and when you are making the change in the number of those products then we call it as an economies of scope right so difference is this between economies in of uh, scale and economies of scope so now let us look at the scope index we are talking about economies of scope so it is important for us to know about what is meant by this scope index scope index is basically helping the firm to know whether they should produce uh, these products togetherly right or uh, they should be produced separately okay so what is the scope index of producing these goods together because ultimately we are talking about the economies how we are able to reduce the cost economies refers to the reduction in the cost either you are getting it by the scale or you are trying to have it by a scope right so this is scope index is helping you to measure whether you should go with the production of these commodities in a single unit uh, with the single uh, with the same uh, manufacturing unit or you need to have a different setup for it so economies of scale can be measured by the ratio of average cost to the marginal cost when a firm uh, produce joint or multiple product okay when a firm is producing joint or multiple product then this is been used and here we use the concept of average cost and marginal cost and we all know average cost and the marginal cost these are the two important cost which help us to attain the optimal level where we can find out like up to what point we should produce so that our cost of production should be reduced so here the scope of index says that if we are producing different commodities like commodity 1 commodity 2 and commodity 3 these are the three separate commodities or maybe the complementary uh, commodities which we are producing together minus uh, total commodities we are, we are trying to produce and then we take the average of commodity 1 plus commodity 2 and commodity 3 so how we are going to understand the scope of this s in uh, scope index if the scope uh, you know s value comes positive right if the value comes positive that means we should go the product we, we should go with the production of all the three products or, or all the different products which we are trying to produce with the same uh, product line right with the same manufacturing unit or if we are getting the results in in negative then definitely we should try to produce them separately right so this kind of a decision making can be done with this scope index and how this will help you in planning out your production activities because ultimately the focus here is in the in the reduction of cost how the cost of production can be minimized and this long run average cost curve is helping us to make out various decision like in our yesterday session also we have discussed uh, we we not always work up to the optimum quantity right though we are able to find out the optimum point with the integration of marginal cost and average cost but we are not always producing up to the optimum point because we have to make our production as per the demand in the market right if the demand is more then we need to produce more than the optimum point if the demand is lesser then we of course have to need lesser than the optimum point because that quantity will be wasted right so this long run average cost curve again helps you to make out the decision whether you should go ahead with the existing plant size or you should install the new plant size to your business or to utilize it over utilize it or to under utilize it where your cost will be minimum so all these economies of scope can be finded out this is been done basically when you are producing more than one unit and economies of scales work when you are increasing the size of any one commodity right now let us move to the next heading where we are going to talk about cost and learning curve right what is meant by the cost and learning curve learning by doing refers to the process by which producers learn from experience this is very simple to learn right and very simple to understand learning curve learning basically whatever you are doing your learning takes place and when your learning takes place you become specialized and you become experienced into that area and uh you know you will be able to do that work in a better way in future right so production techniques available to the real world 
फॉर्म आर कॉन्स्टेंटली चेंजिंग बिकॉज ऑफ लर्निंग बाय डूइंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजिकल चेंजेस राइट वेन एवर वी डू समथिंग राइट वेन वी आर डूइंग समथिंग वी वी गेन सॉर्ट ऑफ लर्निंग टू इट हाउ वी कैन मेक इट बेटर हाउ वी कैन इम्प्रूव इट एंड दिस इज हाउ दी टेक्नोलॉजी ग्रोज दिस इज हाउ पीपल डेवलप न्यू वेज ऑफ डूइंग थिंग्स राइट वेन यू स्टार्ट समथिंग इनिशियली यू आर नॉट अवेयर ऑफ हाउ टू प्रोसीड विद वट आर दी थिंग्स विच आर बीन रिक्वायर्ड हाउ यू कैन डू इट इन अ बेटर वे बट यू वंस डू इट यू गेट दी लर्निंग यू गेट यू नो यू गेट दी एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ डूइंग दैट थिंग्स एंड यू एक्सप्लोर न्यू आस्पेक्ट्स टू बी एसोसिएटेड विद दैट पर्टिकुलर प्रोसेस वेयर यू कैन एनहैंस इट वेयर यू कैन मेक इट मोर बेटर राइट सो बिकॉज ऑफ लर्निंग Uh, by doing and technological changes you will be able to employ these aspects right so technological change is an increase in the range of production technique right you you uh, come up with the better production techniques that provides new vistas to the producing goods so learning gives the experience to the person and this experience will help the person to develop new ways new technologies uh, new new methods of doing that particular thing and uh, which helps it of of course this helps in the reduction of time as well as cost right suppose if there is a book given to you to read it out right so initially you might take more time to read that book because you are reading it for the first time right but if you if that same book is been given to you to read it again then definitely the time uh, which you will going to get for the, for the second time will be lesser right because now you have already gained that learning what is there in this book and what has been written where right so you will be able to read it faster and you may be able to read it much much faster when it has been asked to you to read it for the third time right so everything which you are keeps on doing gives you a learning and those learnings will uh, develop the understanding in your mind where you can imply those learning in a better way so we have seen the integration of learning curve and how this learning curves help in the reduction of the cost so let us move further to understand how this learning curves work the rate of a person's progress in gaining new skills or new uh, experience right gaining experience as well as new skills whenever the learning takes place when you keep on doing certain things your rate of progression increases your experience into that area will increase which also helps in the you know increase in new skills right and with that increase set of suppliers production process facility which you are using the workforce you are having distribution channels and managerial teams they are all resulting in the improvement of technical efficiency right so learning curve basically makes us understand that once we are managing the things right we have a set of suppliers for our company we have a team uh, which we called as a workforce uh, people right we have a distribution channel so how we are going to integrate all those things for the better management and for the cost reduction of the company that can be easily done by doing it and that is why we always look for the people who have the experience into that area right why people with the experience are demanded more at the higher position because all these kind of decisions need to be taken up and better decisions will be taken up by the people who have a experience of it right and who will have an experience who have done it who learned things right and that is why experienced people are always been required right and one thing which we are talking here about the technical efficiency technical efficiency means which improves the uh, you know technicalities of your work which will get which will gives you better result efficiency means doing your work in a uh, better way right by by lesser resources you are requiring and more output you are providing that is actually meant by efficiency now let us look at this curve how this curves work so learning curves basically represent the extent to which average cost of production falls in response to the increase in output whenever uh, you know you are putting this kind of experience into the business so you increase the input size when well, the cost will be reduced right your average cost of production will be reduced when you will be increasing your output if you apply these learning principle so this is how we basically draw this learning curve on the x axis we have number of attempts at learning how much time we have taken up to do it and then on the y axis we are showing the performance so you can see initially the learning is takes place but that is taking place at a slower pace so slow beginning takes place because you take some time to understand it learn it and then there is a steep progression 
okay you learn things automatically you get to know how things need to be done and what are the different ways you can incorporate to make it better and then at the later stage there will be a plateau you will be reaching up where definitely you come to a point where you have understood the various aspect of those things and further might be possible uh, you are not able to explore it much right so this is all about for our today's session where we have talked about economies of large scale and here we have discussed them into two different categories internal and external we have talked about this economies of scale further we have classified them into internal and external and these both internals it takes place because of the size and the operation of the firm whereas external economies and external dis economies arises because of the size of the industry right then we have understood the concept of economies of scope right how we can produce uh, different uh, products uh, which are of complementary nature so that we would be able to reduce the cost and lastly we have seen the integration of learning curve into the reduction of the cost how learning of the people will help you to get better methods or better produ uh, production techniques to reduce the cost of your uh, you know average cost of your company by increasing the size of output right so if we uh, say about the reference material which we are been taken up for this lecture so there are some books we have written here uh, for today's session thank you all of you